Uh, good morning everyone, uh, I hope uh, everything is fine. Today we'll talk about lecture number 6, Interpreting Your Multiple Sequence uh, Alignment. This uh, lecture is a part of uh, Multiple Sequence uh, Alignment Module, uh, it's, which is Module 5, and uh, it's part of Introduction to Bioinformatics Online Course IBT 2016. Uh, and uh, today I hope you enjoy this last lecture in this module. So, uh, today we'll talk about interpreting your multiple sequence alignment and uh, the interpretation is, it's, uh, is uh, to make sense uh, to, uh, from your alignment, how to make sense, good sense of your multiple sequence alignment. And simply you have to extract uh, some blocks of your alignment and uh, to uh, see some special position and try to make sense of it to have a, a biological uh, meaning. Uh, to you. So in this case, for example, this interpretation is a little bit of art and uh, of course you have to know some information about the E value which you already to, uh, have studied in the last medium, medium number 4 uh, in more detail. So today we will not talk about E value but uh, at least you can review uh, the last lecture in the last module and see what E value and how we can calculate it. But anyway we will uh, this will be used in this module also so uh, you have to put your eyes uh, uh, in the E value scores uh, from uh, your multiple alignment uh, uh, result. So, uh, to, to do uh, a good interpretation, you have to have to do some guesswork. And this guesswork actually educated guesswork, so it needs uh, some information in biology and to know what you are doing, why you are using, using multiple sequence alignment and what you are looking uh, for. Uh, DNA is by far, of course, is a little bit uh, more difficult to interpret simply because you only have four letters and these four letters uh, uh, you need to have a high level of conservation, of course, so single co conserved column is meaningless. Of course, you will not get anything from single conserved uh, column. So you need to have blocks, conserved blocks. And of course, these conserved blocks have to have a meaning for you. So, uh, and it's, as we said, it's only informative if you have identical columns in cluster, cluster of several columns. Uh, in this case, you have really a, a, sing, a signal or something like that have a biological meaning. So that's why uh, uh, working with protein is much better and preferable for uh, biologists than working with uh, DNA. So uh, to, to have a, a, con a convincing part uh, uh, about your uh, multiple sequence alignment and what you are looking for, you have to know a little bit about protein structure, uh, some little information about what's a primary structure, uh, secondary structure, tertiary structure, and quaternary structure, uh, the difference between them, and of course, what kind of amino acid that involved in each uh, structure. So that's why you can expect that this amino acid, if, if it's conserved, can give you uh, this structure or whatever. So that's why uh, if understanding and knowing uh, the rule of each amino acid uh, and good understanding and comprehending uh, features, different features of amino acids will help you uh, to understand the rule of it in the structure. Uh, for example, if you are looking for a protein and structure contained, for example, surface loops in the protein, it's, you know that it evolves rapidly. So surface loops in the protein uh, usually, so that's why you will not find a lot of uh, conservative part in these uh, loops, but you know that it evolves rapidly and you will, find, uh, you will not find a, a big conservation rate. But if you, if you, on the other hand, if you look at the rigid portion of the protein, the core of the protein always is more stable, and that's why you can expect to find, uh, you can expect to find uh, a conservative, uh, conserved columns in the uh, uh, in the core of the core region of the uh, protein or uh, as a support walls, but. Uh, of course, as we said, loops uh, evolve rapidly and that's why you can uh, expect to see less conservative columns in the loops. Uh, 
uh, so to, to, to expect a nice uh, to find a nice conservation conservative part you have to find gap free block you so you can you will find a block that have uh, gap free so, so that's why you can expect that this is uh, a, a nice core of the protein but if you uh, find a gap rich region so this you can expect that this part can be loop uh, in the protein so um, this is capitalistic uh, science this science are very important for you to understand and you can find this uh, science in uh, many uh, programs that uh, cluster w uh, cluster omega muscle t coffee uh, many program uses capitalistic science so you have to understand the meaning of it so a star may indicate entirely conserved column so entirely conserved column uh, are represented by a star uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, colon is uh, indicates only where you can find a same size and hydropathy. So this uh, this is the next one. A colon. So star is uh, as we said entirely conserved. A colon is uh, roughly have the same size and the same hydropathy. It's so it's also uh, a good uh, indicator. Uh, number three is uh, a period. A period in the case column where the size or hydropathy. So uh, so it's less conserved. So we have a, a star, colon, and period. So these signs are very inter uh, important to interpret your uh, degree of conservation. So the average block, good block. Uh, you need to have from 10 to 30 amino acid it's exhibiting at least one to three stars so uh, one to three stars few more columns and several periods so if you find a block a good block that have one uh, one to one to two or three stars and then few columns and then several periods you can say oh that's a good block that we uh, may, may give a good uh, indication for biological uh, meaning uh, but in my point of view if i mean if you find from five every 50 amino acid if you find five conserved position in the protein your protein this mean it can convince me that it is a genuine single uh, signal so uh, at least you can uh, take a look at your protein and try to find uh, at least five or whatever uh, from four to five uh, conserved position uh, this at least, which is less than 10 percent identity but it is in, in the protein it's a good uh, or genuine signal uh, so this is what we are looking uh, for of course we have to remember that we require at least 25 percent identity codes to consider pairwise uh, alignment so uh, conserved columns in the multiple sequence alignment are meaningful only when the surrounding columns are not conserved keep this always in your mind so always you are looking for a signal or conserved columns which is surrounded by not conserved columns so in this case this mean did it give a meaning and, and and very good meaning and that's what we are looking usually looking for so when you find a column or blocks of columns that are uh, uh, conserved and surrounded by non conserved so this uh, usually can give a good indication of a signal another criterion for useful multiple alignment is the type of what type of amino acid that's what we are going to say now we'll talk about what types of amino acids you expect to be to see it conserved so that's why uh, you look at what type of amino acid types is make a big difference and to expect and to see and conserve it uh, uh, and and we know that not all amino acids are not equal uh, and they have a characteristic pattern of mutation and conservation and multiple sequence alignment so that's why some amino acid can be replaced by another amino acid and some amino acid uh, uh, cannot be replaced by another amino acid and if if this replacement happen this really can make a big difference and big change in the uh, amino acid uh, and the characteristics of your uh, protein uh, 
a pattern in, uh, of conform uh, conservation in multiple sequence alignment, we will see, for example, uh, uh, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. Uh, these sets, it's all, it's always these amino acids are hydrophobic, and this hydrophobic residues uh, we can find it easily. It sits deep in the core of rock proteins, so uh, it, it's always uh, responsible for the stability of the protein. So uh, this is difficult to mutate. Uh, therefore, we can always see that this is difficult to mutate, uh, and any mutation in these amino acids, the, this hydrophobic amino acid can make a big trouble uh, for the beauty uh, for uh, for the protein itself uh, tryptophan amino acid when it's uh, mutate for example we see that uh, they replaced uh, by uh, another aromatic amino acid such as phenylalanine or tyrosine so this uh, this three amino acids can be replaced by each other uh, and uh, this uh, to have a pattern of uh, aromatic amino acid and uh, this uh, can be a common signature uh, to recognize protein uh, domains uh, this uh, for example this part of what you are looking for another case uh, we can you can look at take a look at glycine and proline for example uh, you can simply can find glycine or proline at the extremities of beta strand or alpha helixes so simply you can know if you look conservative parts of glycine or proline you can you can know that this is at the extremities of well structured uh, beta uh, strand or uh, alpha helix uh, uh, cysteine, uh, cysteine are famous, of course, to make uh, uh, disulfide bridges, and uh, of course, this conserved columns of cysteine uh, can be a signature for recognizing protein domains and uh, faults, which is uh, can easily uh, be found, as you can see in the pictures, and and, and indicate uh, this uh, signature for disulfide uh, bridges. Um, uh, histidine and serine, for example, that's very interesting because usually we can find it in the catalytic sites in the catalytic protein, like for example, proteases. Uh, proteases in the active site, you can find uh, histidine and serine. So, so this uh, is a very good example uh, to locate your uh, uh, your uh, catalytic sites uh, inside uh, your uh, protein. If, of course, if your protein uh, of interest is uh, have any activity of uh, catalyst as a catalyst, um, the, the the lysine, arginine, aspartic acid, uh, or glutamic acid. Of course, this all all of the all these four are uh, charged amino acids. So you can find them uh, in a uh, in, in involved in the lesion bind, uh, binding. So that's why, if you take a look at your uh, multiple sequence alignment and find highly conserved columns uh, of this amino acid, uh, it uh, can indicate uh, salt bridge. Uh, inside the core of the uh, protein. You see in zipper, of course, it's another uh, one which is uh, this very conserved You see in zipper, of course, uh, can indicate involvement in protein-protein uh, interaction. So, uh, and this, uh, you can find it in proteins that, uh, uh, that uh, interact with other uh, protein. So, these are examples of how to interpret your multiple sequence alignment, especially protein multiple sequence alignment, and what you are looking for. Of course, if you in DNA, you are looking for something else. Uh, for example, you can look for promote regions or uh, um, and, and different regulatory element in the in the region. So that's why uh, everyone have to take a look and take a peek at what he is looking for in his alignment and uh, and uh, and the characteristic of uh, what he is looking for. Uh, I hope this uh, lecture can, could help you to understand a little bit about multiple sequence alignment. And I hope you enjoyed the sixth uh, lectures of multiple sequence alignment. And uh, we uh, will explain a little bit about uh, uh, about your uh, task. Uh, and uh, I wish the assignment uh, will do better. Uh,
and uh, you have no difficulties to uh, have uh, your assignment. Thank you very much and see you again. Bye-bye.